when I was in Vivek office, he was a venture capitalist back then, big office. Big office, he always used to order big lunches. So we were discussing, and he ordered a big lunch from a big place. And then there was a lot of big, big chicken and other meat that came in. But then we ate it, you know, it was not very good. Very dry and insipid. While eating, you know, he said in Hindi, I don't know if you can translate it yourself. But he said, I agar ek mare murge mein jaan dal sakte na, to baat nahi. Which literally means if you can put life back into their animal, that's going to be, you know, create something spectacular. So I think the fact of the matter is that the only way for you to actually put magic in it is if you can truly own it. And then you can, you know, infuse you know, all the goodness in the world. In it. So I think the dominoes of what you spoke about or whatever, or the fact that you know this just owns every step of the way and every single gram of meat that's sold on Licious platforms is sourced, manufactured, quality checked and delivered by Licious. This is this was imperative simply because this is what the consumer deserved in the context of the category. Because the problem in the category was that of inconsistency and non-standardization. How do you solve for that? What are the brand? The brand is one that offers a consistent and significant and a the reliable experience repeatedly. Right? So you can't be a brand if you don't control that. And I think that was the genesis of it. Or I don't know if you want to add anything. I don't think there was any other way to build a high quality meat business until you really make an impact on the supply chain. See, Indian meat supply chain has never been built before delicious. A fresh chicken goes actually a chicken cut in front of your eyes. Uh, so you can imagine the quality of uh, that. Right, and that is what Lishis didn't carry any baggage of this industry. We started with a clean slate, defined what a good quality of meat looks like, and built the supply chain for to deliver that high quality experience to the consumer. I think my my growing up days were full of scarcity. So I think when you can learn to operate in scarcity, you you can live in surplus. The other way around is not. If you're born in surplus, you just don't know what to do with it. I think fundamentally, scarcity uh, is like the, the headline of my my childhood, my growing up. And, and I think that's why, as an entrepreneur, uh, you know, along with Vivek on the journey, you know, whenever we've seen, and we mostly see, you know, the the downward, you know, curve very closely, or rather the, the the tough the tough notes in the in the journey. I think that's when you know that, you know. This is just temporary and you can do more each. Actually, I come from a family where everybody is in some family business and nobody has studied well and stepped out of the house and you know built something of their own. Okay, so I surely don't want to be part of that umbrella. So you know I wanted an independent uh, identity. Uh, I was reasonably good at studies, uh, you know, school topper, college topper, etc. When I so I was the first family member to step out of Chandigarh to come to Bangalore in 2004 and the only guy, you know, it was a big deal for the for family to send me uh, away. It took many many years for family to make, you know, settle with the fact that uh, you know, Vivek will uh, live in Bangalore. Uh, and after working 12-13 years in the corporate career, I still felt that it is not big enough to prove that I have uh, identity and you know when Abhay came to me with this opportunity I thought I think this is a platform where uh, you know, personally we can excel <laughs> So I think that's again role modeling right? If you are not Dreamy I nobody is going to believe that value itself So what is Dreamy I Dreamy I is uh, I can speak this in English right in Hindi right Pulling up most of the right so I think the, the point that we are making is me and Vivek try and explain this to people. We say that yeah, for us, Licious, coming to Licious every morning when we put the bag on our shoulders actually feels like we are coming back to school. You know, remember when we used to go to school, put that bag and you know, like what are you going to learn today, right? I think entrepreneurship is, is that experience all over again for us. So we, are, you know, we also say that you know, we are not building Licious, Licious is building us. Right. So when does that happen? It happens when you commit yourself, you know, uh, to the organization in that way. So I think this is just one value, right? Uh, and there are a bunch of other values, but we keep talking about it. I think 
through rituals, through appreciation, through, like I said, role modeling, through conversations, through through things that we do in the organization, how we reward them, how we penalize people. I mean, if you're going to, for example, uh, you know, sack somebody or pull somebody down in front of hundred people for trying something new, which failed, you know, then they'll say, okay, you know what, you know, this guy, these guys are just speaking some French and Greek, but they don't mean it. Let us look at the data and then we'll talk about you know what the you know, industry is talk, you know, talking about. Talks and data are very different. India per capita meat consumption is very, very low. It is around 7 8 kgs a year. America's per capita meat consumption is 112 kg. China's per capita meat consumption is around 62 kg. So 80% of Indians are protein deficient. So we are very far away, you know, from reaching uh, some stability and then uh, declining. So we have to catch up first some of those trends and if you uh, read some of, uh, more depth data per capita meat consumption is directly correlated to per capita income the time affordability of consumers keep going up they consume more protein and chicken is the cheapest uh, source of protein trust me you can't get enough protein from your body by eating dals we got it one yeah so uh, so i think so these are two different uh, things. While at the same time, if somebody's health is not allowing, if somebody is really consuming too much of meat and it is not healthy, then I think those for those consumers, you know, veganism or going off meat is important. But I don't think these are clashing uh, metrics. Now coming to veganism, if any such trend picks up uh, in India, okay, and uh, you know, we will be the first one to uh, provide. Uh, with that kind of solution in the consumers, you know, because we understand meat that we uh, we will understand meat alternative or meat replicas also uh, very well. Yeah. You wake up in the morning and you know, I mean, for example, we're just talking. You know, some like, oh my god, you know, I want to make crab curry. Doesn't work like that, right? So that's like a fundamental thing. And and that doesn't mean that there is no impulse or behavior in our practice. There is to solve for that. We have the RTC RTE selection, right? I mean, you don't want to make a roast chicken from scratch because it's going to take let's say three hours. So we will give you a roast chicken that you can put together in eight hours. In the mind of the consumer, impulse is the way means to an end, right? So your product strategy to the brand should, should solution that. Right? And that's how we think about it. My favorite is smoked chicken mix. I would have ordered that in around 100 times in the last six months. Sunday roast chicken. Yeah, I can't cook that, so Sunday was kind of I love that. The day I get an opportunity, I play, I play around uh, 20 days a month. Uh, so uh, and that gives me, keep me in the same form, so it brings a lot of sanity. Uh, that is the hour I think I forget everything in life and just focus on me. So, you know, I think I just it's like Nirvana moment where I don't think about anything else and just so it's very very important. Yeah, I spend a lot of time with my bachas. Uh, you know, so that is another uh, second Nirvana moment uh, for me. Uh, so during that uh, day of the week, I don't do anything else. Just spend time with uh, them. We go out on holidays, just me and my kids, etc. So all that. You know, two, two different things. Two different things. I don't want to say that. Then on the other yeah. side, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So for me, I don't know. I love to, I love to eat. I love to cook. I love to cook. So I think I, so I cook at least twenty times in a month. The way he plays twenty times in a month. Even if I'm the most tired, I'll come back home and I'll cook. Uh, the other thing I've started doing now is I've started learning singing. So, so yeah, I really look forward to my uh, singing classes.